Hey everybody, tonight's video is going to feature my trip to Jukebox Kennels. Every year they put on a meat hunt, and this meat hunt actually fell on the weekend I was going hunting with the Dunlaps. So last Friday night I went hunting with the Dunlap family, and then got up the next morning and drove to meet the Jukebox people, and they all weren't there because some of them were at a competition hunt. So I want to take this time to recognize Ron Smith, Blake Perkins, and Jake Perkins, and they were gone at a hunt this weekend. So hopefully sometime in the future I get to go hunting with them. But in this video you'll get to see an interview at the end with Chuck Gallardo, and the hunting portion is with Mark Gallardo and their jukebox dog Joe Dirt. There you go. Just, just get it from this angle. This, oh, this, she's mean. better on this <laughs> side of her face. <laughs> <laughs> she looks better from this side. Pretty one. Yeah. Behind you, Mark. Tell me a little bit about this dog we're hunting today. Uh, we're hunting Joe Dirt today. He's just about four years old. Um, won the WTDA World Hunt with him when he was 18 months old. Then uh, we got reserve in the Donnie Gill first annual uh, competition hunt for him. And ever since, I mean, he. I mean, he's a young dog. He does his things, but when he's on, he's he's lights out. What all hunts have you had him in? Uh, I had him in a, the WTDA Little World Hunt last weekend down in North Carolina. I had uh, he was in the Claude Thomas uh, Appreciation World Hunt. We had uh, 
Ronnie Smith's boy Devin hunting him then when he was 16 months old um, and had him in a couple other USDC hunts. Did you say what he's out of? He's out of Jukebox Charlie and our Shady Lady female. Okay. Which that goes back to our good Queenie bloodline and also some of Alan Franklin's Thunder bloodline. There's two up there. Oh. Yep. That one's getting in a hole, Logan. There's one in the tree above you. Yeah, He's treated another one. There's another one right above you, Mark. He's coming down right here. There's right above you. <laughs> Different color. Yeah. Yo, come on. Hey, we got him. I know there's a lot of excitement. Come on. Why we're gonna have to let the barrels cool down here pretty soon. <laughs> It surprised me he's open on the ground, but the way everything is with today, it was getting the multiples. I see. You probably come down tree on these big oaks where your deer died, Charlie. You can see it from here. It went on this side. Good job, buddy. Hey, he worked. He, he, he's 
corner. It was in the nest, I shook the tree next to it, it came out and went from me to you again. Logan, move her. No, I got it, but make sure I don't. Hang on a second. I think I'll call. Hey, Dana, go that way a little bit. Deer hunting wasn't there yet. So I didn't grow up a deer hunter. Um, later on, I started deer hunting like everybody else did, but I've always been into dogs. Uh, when I was in high school, I had my first coon dog, and I had beagles in high school. And uh, then I probably got into the squirrel dogs in the uh, late 80s, middle 80s probably. And then I got two box around the beginning of the 90s somewhere right when you hunted for rabbits you used beagles i assume yeah, that too yeah, so yeah. is that your first dogs you hunted with was beagles on no uh hounds were the first ones hounds yeah the first i went back to some finley river thought uh, i had a pup out of finley river joe okay and i think of john monroe and owned that line of dogs at that time and that's where i started yeah I've, those are well-known dogs yeah so that's that, that's the breed i started with and hunted with, and uh, then uh, I'm gonna say probably in uh, uh, 2000 something, uh, I got into coyote dogs too. And, and I had a friend up in Canada, and Hedgy sold me, uh, he wanted a squirrel dog, and he told me he was into coyote dogs, and I told him I didn't have anything, I had to start a dog, but I didn't want to sell it. He said, well, I said, well, would you sell me a coyote dog? He said, well, you won't sell me a squirrel dog. So I sold the squirrel dog. I bought a pair of coyote dogs. Yeah. If you could pick a favorite hunting, do you have a favorite? Right now? Right now, let's we'll say right now, yeah. Coyotes. Coyotes. I, I love the right coyotes. <laughs> uh, I treat a lot of coon, treat a lot of squirrels. Um, I've got two really, really good labs we use for bird hunting. I'm a guy. Uh, died over at Elkridge Game Farm here in Ohio, and so I still stay really busy with the dogs. Yeah. But uh, got a really great place up in uh, Michigan, up at Jay Wright's place uh, at, Hope, at Hope Lake, and we can run coyotes up there and just have a blast. In. Yeah. So that's it's a lot of fun, especially this time of year. You, oh yeah. You can get on them quite oh, a bit. Yeah, we're. Some people don't like snow, we're praying for it every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This winter, how's it been this winter for you? We we normally don't go up in December, but we did go up and had about eight inches of snow between Christmas and New Year's. So we got a week with the running up there. And, and so now we're back praying for snow. Yeah. Well, hopefully you get it. I mean, it's, it's cold enough now again. It's it got warm a little bit. There's been a lot of years that we haven't got 
snow for the last week of January in there, but then we hunted off through February and we got lots of running in. So no, we're not getting too nervous yet. <laughs> what you said you got jukebox in the early nineties is when you got yeah. them. Yeah. How did how did that kind of happen? How'd that come about? Um uh, the guy I got him from, um, he'd come up here. I thought I had a squirrel dog. I bought a dog, some of these guys remember Kenton. Uh, Kenton, Ohio was a big coon dog. Coon dog, maybe a little bit of a beer drinking type of. <laughs> we got lots of people. It's kind of like this place would be a ghost town when we left. And just everybody seemed to go to Kenton at yeah. that time. And it, it was a blast. You could get your lights fixed and buy new lights and all the dog supply stuff that you needed. And then, then through the years, it turned into kind of a giant flea market, but that didn't stop us from going. It was, it was we made a lot of good friends, a lot of good memories. I bought a squirrel dog in Kent, and I brought this thing back to camp, and uh, they did everything but laugh me out of it. Well, then it kind of turned out pretty good. He, you know, he was treating squirrels. And I didn't know much about a squirrel dog at that time. And uh, there was a guy who wrote for uh, Full Cry at that time, and I kind of looked him up and went and bought a pup off of him. And that fall, he came up here to go hunting, and he hunted up here a few days and stuff. And I think, I believe about that time in his life, he was going through a divorce. And when he left here, he asked me to uh, keep him here. And I hunted him through the through the fall and the winter and the spring. He came back and got him. And then, uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, the pup got hit on the road. Oh, so we geez. went down and took Mark back down there to get another pup from him. And when he was here, it was around in April. I came home from work. I was lineman for the power company. I got off work, and he came home. And, or I got home, and he. Uh, sitting in the driveway said he was here to take him home. I begged him to sell it and uh, he didn't want to sell him at that time. I went down to get the pup for Mark. Mark and I went down there to get the puppy and uh, I kind of hit him up on it again. He didn't want to sell him and he said if it was a female he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't even think about selling it. And he said you just need a squirrel dog. And I remember the words that he told me and, and uh, so uh, I said, then it's a male, so he said, well, it'd be expensive, and he told me what it was, and I went to the truck and wrote a check out. Well, I guess I'm pretty glad I did. Yeah. <laughs> and, but he kept the dog there, and he hunted him. He said that that dog could win the uh, world hunt, and he was gonna keep the dog there, and he wanted so many shells, shotgun shells, and so many 22 shells, and he wanted a, a pair of new boots, and he said, when you see me the next time, the shells will be gone, the, the boots will be wore out, and hopefully you're going to have a world champion. And he called me the first round from Forest City, Arkansas, uh, world hunt, and said he, he uh, uh, was high scoring dog in the morning hunt, he won his cast, he won his cast in the afternoon, same way on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, high, won his cast, high scoring dog, he called me about one o'clock on a uh, Sunday afternoon, he says, how's the field out on the world team? <laughs> so that was the first one, and then he had nine other ones after that. So the dog was a real deal, he really was. Uh, uh, times have changed from where we were back then to where we are now, but he was a squirrel dog. Um, he, he, he was a squirrel dog in anybody's book. So how many world champions have been out of him, then, or traced back to him? Well, just for Mark Henno alone, uh, we have 25 after him. So he gave us 10, so we have 35 world titles for Mark Henno right now. <laughs> I would like I would like to keep track of how many state hunts we won and or the money hunts we won and, and uh, any type of title hunt. I wish I would have kept kept that, but you know when you're going through it, you're not yeah. really worried about it. You're just thinking we got one next weekend and where we're gonna go. and, and uh, but I'd like to know how many pups he's had, uh, how many pups he we've sired through the years, and can't keep track of that either. Yeah. So, but we've done we've done well, and uh, in that line of dogs, I think I made a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, I can just say what it is and where we're at. And don't have to lie or cheat or act like we're somebody which we're not any different than anyone else. But we've sure had a blast with this. 
this line of dogs. Yeah. If you could narrow it down to one, can you pick one of your uh, favorites? I'm sure that gets asked. I get that question gets asked a whole, yeah. whole bunch of times. It's uh, I ask up everyone, and it's if you've it's, been doing this for any amount of time, it's about an impossible question to ask. It, it is. I, I'm really splitting hairs with a lot of different dogs. Um, the um, uh, babe dog was very, very close. And now we've got Siri now, she's won seven world hunts. I mean, uh, I don't want to say this for sure, but I think she might have, that might be the most uh, any females ever won. I believe Siri did. Ronnie Smith is one of the guys I'm, I'm with on, on these dogs. Uh, Ronnie handled her and he should really be proud of how she turned out and stuff like that. But, yeah, she's a heck of a dog. So it's it's like you're kind of splitting hairs. It, yeah. it really is. But one thing they all had in common, they were good sport dogs. I mean, they were out there feeding sports. Yeah. And, uh, that's kind of what where we're at today. That's what we sell. We sell dogs to squirrels. I mean, uh, we use them for coon hunting too. Yeah. Uh, we take them out tonight. It's a coon dog. We take them out during the day for squirrel dog. <laughs> so I, I assume then if you're starting one as a pup, it's just all squirrel at first and then well not necessarily, not necessarily. Um, sometimes it's whatever Ronnie catches in the cage behind his house <laughs> yeah. So, yeah yeah so <laughs> they're tree dogs we label them yeah we, we they're meat dogs you know what I'm right saying? so but we label them for squirrel on we label them when we're working on it but yeah that's the deal on the little bit how we get them started sometimes yeah it's a climbs that's right it climbs it's <laughs> <laughs> we promised Jody those two wouldn't, wouldn't fall out, but if it climbs, it's usually in trouble. <laughs> Over the years, have you noticed a certain line of dogs that you have outcrossed with and had success with? Yeah. Uh, believe me, there's a lot of good guys, I'll say this first, in the squirrel dog world. And uh, it's changing a little bit these days, but uh, Alan Franklin and the Thunder Dogs, and I think Alan will tell you the same thing, uh, our dogs cross really well together. Uh, Thunder blood, and two box blood, and that's that's not the only old blood on the market, but it, it's Thunder and two box is pretty well known, and, and uh, that blood mixes really well. We both had really good dogs with, if you want to say, each other's blood. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I would say that that was the that was the way to go, and we still like it today, and I think Alan does too. Yeah, that's so. the one that I have. Top side is Thunder Sport, and then the bottom side is Jukebox. Right, well, and uh, I think Thunder Sport was out of Jukebox Nini, mm -hmm. so Alan bred a Jukebox, or maybe that's what Thunder Sport was out of. I'm not sure. It might have been what Thunder Sport was out of or something. But it's worked good for him, and it's worked good for us. Yeah. The ones I've been in the woods with that have both those in it are usually the type that I like. Yeah, I mean, they're squirrel dogs. That's, yeah. I sell. Uh, 95% of my dogs that I sell go to pleasure hunters. Yeah. Those pe people that want to treat squirrels and treat them. They, 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 that's what they want. They want a squirrel dog. Uh, the competition world's really changing at a high rate of speed. Uh, they mix and match. They put this in them now or, and, and that in them right now. And maybe one concern I have is in the future because you know, years ago when we started this, game kind of um, it was uh, you might have had two registered dogs that you hunted in UKC and, and uh, then you had the dog over here and the guy said well that's just my third dog well it was a mixed up dog it was kind of a hybrid because you didn't breed him you didn't get pups out of him it was kind of a one and done deal and he would uh, he'd go out and he'd treat your two and uh, maybe better than your <laughs> maybe better than your registered dogs at that time yeah but now I'm just afraid a little bit. We we may see a turnaround. What goes? I guess maybe karma is going to catch us someday to where we're mixing this dog with that dog, and we're getting this really good dog, but they're not reproducing themselves. So time will tell. I hope I'm wrong. I hope these crosses that they make will turn out. But we can take a cur dog. And we take a hound. We got two different kind of dogs there. We got a dog that opens on the ground, and we got a dog that pretty much doesn't open on the ground. And we want to take 
all the good from the hound and put him in the cur. We want to take all the cur, put it in the hound, and make a super dog. And you know, it happens sometimes, and it yeah. does, and it's really good. But can those dogs reproduce themselves? Um, like I said, time will tell. Yeah. Well, like I said, they're putting bird dog in them more, and they're putting hounds in them more, and. Um, we line breed a lot, mm -hmm. and if you look at Thunder's papers, they line breed a lot. There's a lot of blood, so we kind of know what the ancestors will do, yeah. and that's what I'm sticking with. Um, it's worked for me since the early 90s, so we're still in it today, uh, and we're still we're still producing squirrel dogs. Yeah. And like I said, you, you mix, mix this bird dog in it over here at this time, or you mix, mix this hound in it over the next time, the next time you breed to a hound or you breed to quote, a bird dog, you may not get the same yeah. the same blood that I that I hope to get. It doesn't always work. Not every pup that we have uh, turns out doesn't happen. Uh, uh, but I think we have a real good percentage, and that's that's what I shoot for is a good percentage. Yeah, I'm I'm sure it was different 15, 60 years ago, but I feel like they've been around for so long now that. You shouldn't have to do stuff like that. Well, uh, you know, when we'd go to Elnor, in Indiana, uh, to the world hunt stuff, and there was a lot of times there was over 100 dogs in it, okay? Um, and we played for a trophy. We played for, if you want to say, bragging rights. Right. Uh, all our advertisements were in a magazine. They were, uh, you could have Bloodlines, Full Crime, mm -hmm. American Cooner. That's what everybody lived on at that time. Now we have social media. Mm -hmm. Social media is really good. Social media is really bad. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen very many bad dogs on social media. <laughs> you got to remember, that doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. If a guy ran an ad in Full Cry Magazine, that was 250 bucks. If you want a full page ad, it was 250 Well, it doesn't take long to push a couple buttons, and you can tell any story you want about yeah. any dog that you have. <laughs> And uh, so all that kind of stuff is different. So, like I said, there's good and there's bad to it. Yeah. Do you compete at all anymore? I don't. <laughs> I'm a little burnt out on the squirrel dogs. I'm a little burnt out getting up at, at, <laughs> yeah. at one, two in the morning. And being and, on the road. And being on the road, we used to kind of have a rule. If we could get there, be, uh, we could leave here and be there by the deadline. Uh, we didn't have to leave until 2.30 in the morning, then that's what we do. And if we had to leave earlier, then we were going to get a motel. Mm -hmm. So I chased those dogs up and down the road for a long time <laughs> and a lot of different places. And I had a blast. And the other thing is, okay, now we're selling puppies. You know, everybody would love to have a great stud dog or something like that. And well, I guess that's my wish too. So. I get jukebox and I got my wish and the old saying, be careful what you wish for because uh, I talk, talk to a lot of people still today and then the same way with puppies. Uh, that's great to say, hey, I'm going to raise some puppies and sell some puppies. Well, then you went from a litter or two to a, maybe a lot more than that <laughs> and then you have to work. You have to work, you have to talk to these people and some people are very serious and they call you and they want a pup and they know what they want. Some people want to call you and they just want to talk dogs. No. And then some people, uh, I know not too long ago, Jody and I were eating supper and I pretty much answered the phone anytime. I more or less said hello and he told me who he was and we talked uh, about three more words and he told me how his dogs did this week and he told me at the end, hey, nice talking to you and we'll see you later. And uh, Jody said, what was that about? I said, dog, the guy called him, was pretty proud of his dog this week. So some, <laughs> but you can burn a lot of time up on a telephone. Yep. And then when it comes time to pick the pup up, they know they've ordered a pup for a while. And this is kind of a session, but <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. So uh, they call and they order a dog, a puppy, and they might have waited for months to get it. And then I call them and let them know. And, well, then when it's time the weekend to pick it up, they're busy. Yeah, oh yeah. And then the next weekend they're busy. I work. You got to work everybody's work schedule. You got to work everybody's uh, baseball schedule. Yep. Their vacation schedule. Uh, so we work weddings. We work everything, and that kind of drags our time out. So time to breeding, 
and when we're having puppies, I'm down here all the time checking out pups and what we have to do. So it's putting the puppies with the people with what they want. And so, yeah, I might not run the hunts like I used to, but I'm still involved in it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Ronnie or Blake or Mark or I don't think any of those guys want to handle the, the <laughs> customer side. They get customer service. They, 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 they want to load up the dogs and they want to head to the woods. Yeah. I understand, especially like you said, with social media now, it doesn't matter. People can contact you and find different ways to contact you any time of day or night. And yep. They yep. seem to, especially I imagine. Oh, we get the calls. <laughs> California is three hours behind us. Uh, <laughs> guy might have had a few beers, so he doesn't realize what time he called me to talk dogs. Yeah. But it doesn't take long, and you can hear a little bit of a slur in the voice. Not that I would know anything about that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that happens. Yeah. It's part of the game. I'm sure, as you said, doing this, I'm sure you've met a lot of really great people. Oh, my God, years. yeah. I mean, uh, over all the years, uh, I can still say this, that there was only one one guy, and he'll, if he ever sees this podcast, he's going to know who he is. And uh, He bought a pup for me, and, and a friend of mine was going down to... I don't know it was Camp Lejeune or whatever, and it was going to be real close to him, and he'd haul it down for him in the whole shoot match. The guy uh, uh, told me he was going to send me the money. He goes, Chuck, I'm going to send you cash. Well, cash went, didn't come this week, and then it was next week, and then his track broke down. And he says, don't worry, I got you on this. Well, I guess he might have had another track to break down. So <laughs> I, but overall, I mean, the people have been great, and... I'm a people person. I like to talk to people, and, and it's really, it's really been a great ride. It really is. I want change. So, did you start going to Autumn Oaks once Kenton kind of closed up then? Um, yes and no. Um, we had a couple sponsors and stuff like that, and they kind of suggested it would be a good idea if we went down to Autumn Oaks. I don't know. I, we've probably been there. God, I'd have to ask around. He's got a better memory than me. But I'm going to say 15, 17 years, something yeah. like that. We used to have litters of pups to take down there, and we would sell out every year. And uh, now we very rarely have any pups to take out. So we set up and still see a lot of people that we've sold pups to from years. And we meet a lot of new people and yeah. stuff like that. So it's a pretty good deal. I mean, we, we still enjoy going. So that's kind of our... Last thing, we quit raising fall puppies because after Autumn Oaks, it's time that we put, if you want to say the dogs that we're thinking about putting in the hunts, they start first from September, and then as the leaves come off, then the young dogs start going more and more. Not that the young dogs, dogs don't go a little bit, but that's when we we'll settle in more on the young dogs and yeah, stuff like that. Better timing for it. Yeah, well. The woods has opened up a little bit better. And right. Once you get a frost or so, the nuts are on the ground, the mass is on the ground. So it's a better time for young dogs. Mm -hmm. I just wonder because I remember seeing you guys there for a long time. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We, we got it. It was, I think Alan Ginrich came up to me one time and we sat, he sat down with me and he said, uh, uh, Chuck, what's this called? And I said, it's the fairgrounds. And he says, well, what else is it called? And I said, well, Autumn Oaks. And he says, okay. And he says, I've been walking around here and there's more jukebox shirts around here than there, <laughs> than there is ones that say uh, Autumn Oaks. And yeah. I said, oh. I said, well, maybe you're charging too much for them. <laughs> I don't know. You do have nice shirts, though. They yeah. Are, they, they're <laughs> pretty nice shirts. And I haven't really made a lot of money off them. It seems no. <laughs> like, it seems like some of them fly out of here faster without a price tag on them. So, yeah, that's just part of doing business. Yeah. yeah we give a lot of shirts away. As soon as I say this and somebody says this, they're going to call me up and say, Hey, you hey, got a shirt? <laughs> well, you got a shirt. And, hey, you never gave me one. And yeah, <laughs> I bought five. I know that I know what's going to happen now. Yeah. So do you have any any big plans for any crosses coming up on any dogs? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll run. We're still going to breed iPod this year. And it's probably going to be its last. But iPod's responsible for a, a lot of dogs, too. Um, uh, he's been a really, really good dog to us. I mean... He's a good looking dog and he's put a lot of squirrel dogs on the ground. And then we got a son out of him. And then we have another dog called Jukebox Timber. We'll be breeding him too. Uh, I kind of had like two sides. Uh, going way back, we had a queenie side and the guy I got Jukebox for started that queenie side. And um, 
and we keep that blood kind of in one side and then we kind of got iPod and that's with the Alan Franklin side, with the Thunder side. Mm -hmm. So that's worked really good for us. I mean, we kind of, we make our crosses, don't get me wrong, but um, sometimes just because you have a good male and a good female, you hold for the good pups and you want it and you yeah. believe in it. And I would say a lot of times that is going to work for you. But sometimes that blood doesn't work, and it doesn't. And you got to be able to just say it. Hey, it didn't work. Just yep. because you had famous parents uh, doesn't mean you're going to have famous kids. Yeah. And uh, now you hope to put the more blood you can put in them, the better off you'll be. But it, uh, it was a guy that started Galaxy Genetics. I can't think of Fred's last name. He died now. But he sat with me one time at Automotive. He says, "Hey, you got." You know what's going on. And I asked him what he meant by that. He said, well, you lying to me, don't you, Chuck? I said, I do. And he said, well, he's, we were talking to UKC and PKC events, and he said, you know, there'll be a new world champion here this year. And he says, and you got a real good, say, Walker female, and you breathe to that new world champion. He goes, before you know how those pups are going to do, next automobile, so there's going to be a new world champion, and, or PKC world champion. So you take the female and you breathe it back. And he goes, and that's what happens. You uh, want to breed to the new and the hottest thing out there. And maybe they're not producing puppies. Uh, Secretariat was the best racehorse any of us would probably ever see in our lifetime. I mean, he blew everything away. He was the most dominant thing, the most gorgeous horse you've ever seen. And he has never been able to reproduce himself. Yeah. So he's the best example I can give just because dad was good. And our females, we we aren't just breed females. We got the blood that we want in them and we cross it enough times and I think that's why we're still in business today. I think that we just kind of paid attention, but that guy told me that line breeding was the tip. He said, uh, every time you bring in an outcross, he says you're bringing in good, but how much bad is it? No yeah. So I just went on what he said and, uh, uh, and kind of stuck to that. It's worked for us. So that's not the only way to do it. And I kind of said I've been on a couple other podcasts. I don't want to tell anybody what to do, how to do it. I tell you, like, maybe what we do and how we do it. And that's what works for us. Right. And if, if you want to incorporate something the way we do it, like people can buy puppies from us, they'll call us and they'll say, uh, ask us questions. And we'll tell them what we do. Now, we don't want to be a know-it-all, and, we, we, and there's been a lot more successful people than us. And we just kind of give them the guidance that we work for us, and that they can incorporate it in what they're doing, it makes a better dog, good deal. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to add other that we haven't touched on? No, I think we're pretty, we're pretty good. I mean, um, I guess uh, sometimes my wife says stuff to me like, uh, Jody will say, you know, you've been in this a long time. You should be a little more proud of what you've done or what you've accomplished. Or, you know, she goes, sometimes I take things for granted and probably take her for granted. Try not to very much. But she says, uh, you've made so many friends over these dogs. And she goes in, we'll get a call, and a guy says, Chuck, I bought a dog from you 15 years ago or 20 years ago, and that was the best dog I ever had. Boy, I need another one, or I need one for my grandkids now. And and she kind of keeps me grounded a little bit where she says, but she also says, hey, um, you've been in a long time, you should be proud of what you've done. And so that's what I'm saying. I'm proud, don't like to brag, uh, but it's been a good ride. It really yeah. has. And if I don't mention Jody in this, because she's <laughs> a big part of this, I'll be in a lot of trouble. And, she has helped through the years at this kennel as much as anybody did. She uh, never told us, never told me no. She never said stay home. Don't yeah. go. She would push us out the door. And <laughs> she'd say the only thing she'd say, and she say when we leave the driveway, she said one of you guys better win today. <laughs> so we took her advice sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Do want to say one thing? I don't want to forget some of the guys. I don't want to forget Mark. That's my son. I don't want to forget Ronnie Smith. When I took Ronnie on, uh, he uh, he wanted to be part of this, and, and uh, 
and I didn't really want to take a partner on it. And Ronnie came to me with his dog, and he wanted it was out of it was out of view box, and he wanted to see, um, you know, see kind of what uh, wanted me to see what the dog did. So we went out the next morning, and the dog did really good. And he told us another one of our friends wanted to uh, buy half the dog. And I told Ronnie and said, "Well, I, if you need the money and you want to have a partner, then that's the way to go." And, and I said, "But I'm not really for partners." And so the next day he says, "Hey, can we go out again? I'm going to show the dog again." So we went out and did a heck of a job. Ronnie asked me again. He says, "You know, what do you think about that?" And I said, "Well, oh, Ronnie, I, I just want to do it." Unless you have to. Ronnie came back to me and he said, You understand, I want to be part of this. He says, I want you to get half, buy half this dog. And he says, Well, he says, he said, I'll think about it. So that night I thought about it. Next morning, Ronnie came down and he says, Well, what do you think? And I said, Well, Ronnie, I'll be honest with you. I said, uh, One of the best things I ever did this day. It, it comes back to me. My son, Mark, uh, he, uh, he took dogs and he hunted them. Mark's, Mark, when he goes to the woods, he's going to the woods. He's going to go squirrel hunting, he's going to go coon hunting. Okay, when he goes, uh, he, we get a dog rolling, he's going to put the numbers on it. And, but Mark's put a lot of titles on dogs too. He took Augie, um, he started out with the original Queenie dog and uh, he, uh, he won with that old girl, but uh, he's a really good handler. He really truly is. He knows how to handle a dog. He's, uh, he's put a lot of titles on the dogs that we have here. So I want to mention those guys. And Blake Perkins has helped us a lot in the last few years. He's uh, uh, Blake's, Blake's really come. He's a good hunter. He goes. Uh, he doesn't talk the story. He he doesn't. And uh, so we got kind of a good group that we have here. And I'm kind of proud of those guys. So this interview isn't all about me. The older days, yeah, that was about newer days right now where we're at today is more about, about those guys they, they really do a great job so i wanted to make sure yeah i got that all right thank you for doing the interview sure all right well that was a great time hunting with them and i look forward to getting together with them in the future doing some more squirrel hunting and i hope you guys are enjoying these videos and if you are make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like and for those of you who subscribe on patreon thank you for your support and thank you all for watching <coughs> Good boy.